<laughs> or why is it such a ranty introduction to my vlog? Let's start, let's do a do-over, right? Hey everyone, Cleo here and welcome to another reading vlog. So uh, the weekend has just started, it's Friday evening. I'm so happy I'm going to be getting myself some junk food which I will be sharing with you guys in a little bit. Uh, and yeah, for the rest I have a full free weekend because normally I go to my parents on Sunday but like COVID-19 restrictions have become like increasingly restricted. <laughs> have <laughs> become increasingly uh, harsh uh, and so now our personal bubble is down to one so in principle you're allowed to invite four people to your place so in principle I could go to my parents and we would need to keep social distancing in their house but I just feel more comfortable having going back into a sort of like full lockdown at this point but so uh, that means that the coming weekends are all to myself and we are also changing time, so we get an hour extra of sleep on Sunday. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that because I am quite tired from this week. It was a hell of a week at work, you know, one of those weeks in which you feel like, you know, for every five emails you answer, you get 10 in return. But so um, for this weekend, I don't have any plans. And in terms of reading, I am hoping that I'm going to be reading a lot, but I am just coming out of a little bit of a more slumpish period. I won't really call it a reading slump. Uh, you know, a lot of those days I still read, but just very limited amount of pages. I've just really been feeling like doing other things, really feeling, feeling like uh, watching gymnastics, like uh, watching Taskmaster. So I've been doing other stuff uh, a lot more than I normally do. I've been playing a lot of Sims as well. So uh, I just had my attention be directed elsewhere and so I hope, I'm hope i hoping to read quite a lot and I want to start by finishing a book today but we'll see whether that ends up happening or not. You know, in terms of my reading productivity, my reading goals uh, for this uh, physical TBR, it would be better if I were to be able to read a lot more but I said this as well in my last vlog. If I don't feel like reading, I don't really make myself read or make myself pick up a book because that is just a recipe for a reading slump in my opinion. But so yeah, I'm currently reading Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. And so this is a story that's kind of technology centered. So, it's, uh, so in a sense, we could call it a sci-fi. It's more like a uh, general fiction novel with like a sci-fi element to it. So in this, we have this new technological development of uh, the Kentucky. Kentucky is like a type of robot but it is a robot that has a camera on it and you can either choose you can choose on which side of the camera you want to be so you can be the person being observed or you can be the person observing and so it's kind of looking at our relationship with technology the way in which we invite these sort of developments into our life without necessarily thinking too much about possible consequences possible implications without necessarily having a uh, clear enough legal frame sets to deal with all of these implications but also looking at these sort of like differences between people who want to observe people who want to be the observer people who want to establish a connection with the other person on the camera or people who are very much like trying to dehumanize this robot even though there is somebody on the other side so it's going into some interesting th things there are also from time to time some like creepier aspects uh, going into this story though nothing like extreme at this point but uh, yeah, I'm interested to see where this story is going to go whether there's going to be some sort of a tie-in at the end because we're looking at multiple perspectives uh, so we have multiple people observing multiple people being observed and so I'm kind of interested to see whether this is going to tie up together at the end or not uh, but so I've definitely been enjoying this one but so yeah going to be continuing with that going to be ordering some food letting you guys see that one in a little bit and then uh, yeah checking with you guys when I'm eating so it's dinner time last reading vlog I gave you guys a little bit of an intro into Belgian culture and that is also what I'm going to be doing today. So I have ordered something that every Belgian loves, every Belgian has quite often. It's actually been quite a long time since I've had some, but you know, um, people wrongfully refer to these as French fries, but they should be Belgian fries. And to say even more, the fries that you often get in other countries are far inferior to Belgian fries. So let's see what we have here. 
And it's a little bit difficult now, but so this is how you're supposed to get them. If you eat these out on the street, for example, you will definitely get them in this, which is called a puntzak. So this is our Belgian fries. They're delicious. And I actually want to make uh, some from scratch myself again, because homemade fries are just as good as fries from the fry shack. They're just great on a different level. But so in Belgium we have uh, what is known as a frietkot. And this is basically like a fry shack, a place where they sell fries and sort of like snacks, but specific snacks that you eat with fries. So that's part one of my order. Then we also have the best sauces for this. This is samurai sauce. This is, um, no not, this is Andalus, which is a sort of like spicier sauce than sauces that uh, you sometimes have in other countries. Our mayonnaise is also way better than the mayonnaise that you guys have in other countries. I can somewhat, like not in all countries of course, but like when I had mayonnaise in the US, I was like, this is not mayonnaise. <laughs> so sorry for you guys over there, but um, I understand why you diss on mayonnaise because you just don't have the good one. So in terms of snacks, this is what are called bitterballen. So these are the non meat types normally you have it with meat in it uh, which I absolutely love but the non-meat ones I actually like a whole lot as well and I'm so happy that they make this now because I used to be kind of addicted to bitterball uh, so I'm happy that I have an alternative and then the final thing that I got is gonna look quite disgusting so the final thing that I have is a curryworst special frikandel special this is called in Dutch Dutch frikandel and like in Belgium it kind of depends whether you call it frikandel or whether you call it curryworst. This is basically like garbage meat in a sausage, the way that bitterball is garbage meat in a ball. But this is an all meat type as I am a vegetarian and uh, it's pretty much ex tastes exactly the same as uh, the meat variety taste. Or at this point I can no longer realize, or maybe at this point my taste but just no longer see that it's different than the original was. But in any case this is... Frikandel, normally you don't have it like that. Normally uh, it's just the sausage, but this is a Frikandel Special which has mayonnaise, which has curry ketchup and which has like little onions. It is delicious. So we in Belgium love this food and we have it all the time. When I went to Spain for like I studied for Spain half a year and when I came home for Christmas the first thing I had to get was fries from the fry shack because it, they're just so damn good and you don't have an alternative when you go to another country. None of the other countries in Europe, none of our neighboring countries do it the way that we do it. So it's very much our national pride. Um, I think we are more proud of our fries than we are of chocolate, which we are made, which we are very well known for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe because of that, maybe because we are known for our chocolate, we don't care as much as we care about the fact that the French are stealing our thunder when it comes to fries. But so yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to be enjoying this meal a whole lot because it's been a quite a while. And I definitely wanted to do this now because there are, because as I said, there are more restrictions for COVID-19 again. And so that means that bars and restaurants are closed at this point. So I want to once again go into take out a lot more uh, in order to support local uh, businesses here in the area and make sure that even though they cannot open anymore and they will be running some losses hopefully this way i can support them a little bit more and keep them afloat but so yeah that's it for my update because now i want to eat Saturday evening. I haven't updated you in a full weekday a weekend today, which could be very good. Could mean that I've been reading all day long, didn't want to get distracted with updating you guys, or been editing all day long. Um, or it could mean something else. So I have basically spent an entire work day, or the what is the the equivalent of an entire work day playing The Sims and watching Sims YouTube. But I had a great time, so I don't 
regret this. Uh, I was kind of hoping to make up for some of my reading slumpy feelings during the week within this weekend, but I still have tomorrow to kind of dive back into reading in any case, and yeah, I had a great time so I shouldn't feel guilty about it. You know, but I should also just learn to be totally fine with the fact that I won't always feel like reading and that, you know, like today, I just wanted to spend all my time on The Sims. And like, I shouldn't beat myself up for that. I still want to play The Sims at this point. That's the only annoying thing at the moment, is that I want to um, continue with ER as well, but it's also on the laptop. So if I um, watch ER on my laptop, I don't think I can do both at the same time. I haven't tried actually yet whether I would be able to, but I think the sound of The Sims game would then maybe could play Maybe. We'll figure out whether I can do that. But so yesterday I finished the book. I finished Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. And for the longest time I was convinced it was going to be like a 3.5 or 3.8. But I think I really liked that ending. So I'm going to give you the 4 in the end. So it's not like it all wrapped up together in the end. But it does have a nice conclusion in the end. I definitely liked that whole final scene. And the way in which that kind of turns the table on somebody. Um, but so all in all, I just really think it's a fascinating read. Um, it's It can be a little bit disjointed because we're reading from multiple perspectives and at no point do they come together. But that's also just something that I love so much. <laughs> I love multiple perspectives coming together so that I kind of always am a little bit disappointed when they don't come together in the end. But so that's just a personal preference that I'm holding against this book at this point. But I did definitely uh, enjoy most of the perspectives or at least most of the um, sort of like most of the commentary that was being uh, made in these different perspectives and I just loved the overall sort of like look at man's relationship to um, technology and to all of these sort of like social media and things like that uh, because it definitely uses a sort of like future in uh, it definitely uses a sort of like possible future evolution of these um, technolo of technologies that we currently already have today to kind of paint an extreme picture of what is actually already kind of happening at this point. But so yeah, now I should be picking out a new book. As I said, I'm most likely not going to be reading today, clearly. <laughs> Maybe I'll do so right before bed, um, but yeah, I don't know yet which one I'm going to be picking out. I definitely do want to still try to get to Tenant of Wildfell Hall this month, but that's a pretty long one, so with the current state of my reading slumpiness, um, I probably won't be able to get to that. I want to read Dark Places, but I want to read that next weekend when it's Halloween, so we'll see. Currently I'm making spaghetti sauce, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Tuesday evening I am giving you an update with these lights again because it's winter time so on Sunday we changed the hour I don't know I don't fully know the term actually are we now in daylight savings time or is daylight savings time the time we just left because here we just say winter time and summer time which is so much clearer uh, but so yeah as a result it now gets dark so damn soon so yeah uh, i can no longer film after work especially not since this week and past week i've been like working way too long <laughs> to get stuff done meaning that like when i finish work it's dark outside and i'm like yeah i need to film a video so my like i'm really unsure what to do about my november tbr i was supposed to have it um out tomorrow but that means I still need to film it today in this light, which I don't like, but okay. I guess I'm going to do it just to have it uh, out tomorrow. But so yeah, I am midway through my current read, actually past midway through my current read at this moment, and that is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So I started this on um, Sunday, but on Sunday basically I did almost no reading in it. I like, uh, it's like somewhere in the evening I figured I was reading it and then I figured out like hey 
This book will probably have an audiobook so I can play the films and listen to the audiobook at the same time, which worked pretty well for this one. I don't always think that it works very well for me in terms of like being able to fully grasp the story, but so with this one it's definitely been uh, working very well. I think there are some still some occasions in which I've kind of drifted off, but so in this one we are following, um, it's kind of a story within the stories. So we kind of start out with an epistolary novel in which this uh, man is sending letters to a friend of his about this new woman who has entered into the neighborhood. Uh, Mrs. Hargrave, I think her name is. No, Mrs. Graham. Uh, so this Miss Graham has entered into the neighborhood with her son. She is a widow, but there is all of this speculation surrounding her. She kind of quickly makes herself unpopular with the neighbors with some of her like uh, strong opinions and while he initially has that same sort of reaction to her he quickly starts to love everything that he hated about her uh, at the beginning uh, and then later on in the novel we dive into a sort of like journal entry uh, book in which we are following Miss Hargram's uh, story like Miss Hargram's past in which she's accounting uh, to the events that led her to be in the countryside alone with her son. I think it's a fascinating book so far and I would actually be very interested in the reception it had uh, like in its contemporary reception at the time because it is like it's very interesting to read from this perspective from a modern day perspective um, to look at all of these sort of like feminist issues that are in there but I would be interested to see how it was received at its time and like the way in which people have reacted to certain things that are in here because in the very beginning for example there's a sort of scene in which um, they are offering like a glass of wine to her and her son uh, because he had to walk too far and so they want to revive him with some alcohol which obviously is something that these days we would all be like what you're offering wine to a child and she refuses she doesn't want her son to be in contact with alcohol and she's really painted as a sort of like um as a sort of like overprotective mother and as a sort of like uh, weird person for like not wanting for trying to keep her son from um, being in contact with spirits uh, and so later on it's then clarified within the book why she has such a dislike for alcohol why she so has so, such strong opinions about that but it would be very interesting to kind of figure out like what contemporaries think about that you know would they have like painted this as like an exaggeration of the effects of uh, alcoholism or would they have lauded her for bringing that to the attention or not so there are definitely some very interesting things in here and uh, i would be interested to see how it was received at the time what i must uh, like shocked by is why this is not more popular you know Jane Eyre is a book everybody knows about and uh, Wuthering Heights is like less like I would say that it's less popular that less people read it compared to Jane Eyre but almost nobody reads The Tenant of Wildfell Hall I feel unless you are like an avid reader unless you're somebody who is uh, like uh, interested in reading a lot of classics this is I feel like this is the least well known of these sort of like big Bronte novels and so far I'm really enjoying this one yes there is like a little bit of a lack of a romance at the center of it at the moment I guess though there is sort of like the possibility for that to develop um, but it's, it could just as well develop in a totally different way and so maybe that is part of the reason that it hasn't seen as many adaptations because it isn't you know a sort of like big romance for people to root for um, but yeah I'm really enjoying this one so far and I'm uh, really enjoying some of the like looks at it you know there's a character there are multiple characters in here which are quite repulsive to us as modern readers but they're also made to be that way but so yeah definitely want to continue with this one uh, and yeah I'm going to be playing The Sims some more in order to uh, listen to it at the same time because I've been getting really some headway into this one the last two days I think Last today I've, I've read almost 200 pages in one evening every single time because I was just playing The Sims and listening to this at the same time. And so yeah, I got quite some uh, work done that way, so I possibly might actually finish this tonight. <laughs> Thank you.
So it is more or less time for me to end this vlog. It is Wednesday evening. I have just finished the Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So it's like a four star read for me, I guess. I think it is just incredible that this was written in the 19th century. So this is basically a book about a woman who falls in love with sort of like bad boy, expecting her to be able to reform him. However, she soon realizes that he is um, past hope, that he is um, you know, wicked true and true, let's call it like that, and uh, she is kind of locked in her situation. However, she leaves him throughout this novel and sets out to find a way to live her life the way that she wants to live it. So, like, revolutionary text for a 19th century uh, novel. I do think that the formatting of this book, you know, I told you guys that it's an epistolary novel, that formatting might not always shine true, it might not always be the best formatting to tell this type of story in. I was very much intrigued as we were like in the first part of this novel and as we, we then then got like to the story within the story. But as we got back into the sort of like frame story for this one, I kind of lost interest a little bit into this story. Um, and so it's not like I was bored with it or anything like that, but I just felt myself like spacing out a little bit more and caring a little bit less about the way in which the story was going to develop from that point onwards. But I still say that I definitely recommend it, that uh, I definitely think that more people should be reading this Bronte and that it is a major text in terms of, you know, the feminist content to it. Um, but so yeah, I've definitely been enjoying that and it's time for me to pick up another book, but that will be in my next reading vlog. You will have seen in the b-roll as well that I got my new chair, so a couple of months ago at this point I was testing out this new chair. And so they finally delivered it today, so um, yeah, I'm very happy with that one and hopefully it's gonna make my working from home experience better, because yeah, now I am full time back to working from home all the time. So yeah, it was perfect timing for this chair to be arriving. But so yeah, that is going to be it for this reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, see you guys for the next one. Bye.